Hi dear friends, friends and subscribers. Welcome to an, a very very uh, exciting cricket happening show today with your host Ram. And the reason it is exciting is this is something of a, the biggest upset of 2014 which today happened in Zimbabwe in the Tri-Series where Zimbabwe, as you would remember, I'm going to take you back to 1983 so you would know why 1983, World Cup 1983 as one would, one would remember as a hardcore cricket fan was Zimbabwe was the team which actually upset the apple cart of Australia in World Cup 1983 as you would remember and after that uh, that particular World Cup 1983 if you think about it Zimbabwe was also in the news when uh, they had India, the Indian team uh, absolutely on the rack at 17 for 5 at Turnbridge Wells in Zimbabwe uh, t t at Turnbridge Wells in England and well what happened was something uh, which was absolutely phenomenal in 1983 the Indian star Kapil Dev actually went on to slam the Zimbabwe bowlers to make 175 valuable runs which not only took them to victory but also it also wrote a new chapter in the annals of Indian cricket history when India picked up their first World Cup in 1983. Well the reason that I'm talking about this World Cup 1983 is because it's all about Zimbabwe as today Zimbabwe created an upset of, of the year 2014 when they actually went on to beat the Australians Zimbabwe winning the match by three wickets in the Tri-Series today when they, they defeated Australia they won the match against Australia by three wickets and this was played at the Harare Sports Club and the reason that I am saying that this is, a, this is something that the Zimbabwe ones really really love to party is because they did it in front of their home crowd and congratulations to Zimbabwe the mighty Australians today had to suffer at the hands of Zimbabwe well Zimbabwe let's talking about this particular match the toss was won by Australia now nobody would have expected that as you know Zimbabwe uh, the bowling has been something which has been pretty good we have been seeing that in the Zimbabwe South African series and then we saw that they also did well against South Africa but the problem has been the batting but today the, 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 the Zimbabwean captain leading from the front with a 50 uh, play, uh, playing a very very and cool and calculated knock of 50 to take this uh, to nurse his team uh, to victory over Australia now one thing that Zimbabwe has not done is that Zimbabwe uh, even though Zimbabwe, in fact they actually bought, they got Australia uh, in all sorts of trouble today uh, on a dry pitch where the spinners were really really making the ball talk and Australia were reduced to 209 for 9 of their 50 overs and then Zimbabwe going on to victory with 2 overs to spare and not only this what this has done for Zimbabwe is that Zimbabwe is now keeping their chances alive in this World Cup uh, in, sorry in this uh, tri-series in Zimbabwe because Australia as you know have lost both the matches now to South Africa and Zimbabwe and well so I'm just going to start off uh, this report so today is going to be definitely dominated uh, by this uh, Zimbabwean upset of Australia today and uh, they would have gone to memories of 1983 no doubt about that and let me tell you after 1983 was the last time that they created a big upset in international cricket and today it took them 31 years to repeat that upset and it was the same country once again Australia well as far as uh, Australia were concerned Australia won the toss Michael Clark was back into the team today that was a good thing for Australia and Australia uh, after winning the toss uh, had no hesitation in batting first Aaron Finch and uh, Will Hughes walked out to open the innings and the Elton Chugumbra uh, the Zimbabwean captain uh, tossed up the first over to John Nimbu the right arm off spinner uh, well we couldn't I mean what one saw was that it was a very quiet start by Australia and then things started happening for Zimbabwe Zimbabwe got an early wicket and John Nimbu uh, got Aaron Finch a clean ball with a ball that turned he was gone bowled by Nimbu for 11 of 12 balls with 2-4 that was the first wicket to go with a score on 11 
Phil Hughes was joined in by the Australian captain Michael Clark. Phil Hughes, well, he struggled with his uh, runs. He was not really uh, able to play well. Uh, and uh, immediately, Elton Chukumbra, seeing that the pitch is gripping, the ball is turning, immediately introduced uh, his, um, his famous bowler who took a hat trick in the last match against South Africa into the attack. And we all know whom I'm talking about. It was Prospero Tsai of Rada Murphy. He came in and he was troubling Phil Hughes uh, a lot. And then Phil Hughes was out of his misery as he was gone, caught Nimbu, a beautiful catch taken by Nimbu. Nimbu took a very, very good catch, I thought, of the balling with Sai after 10 of 30 balls. And uh, 38 for 2 was the score in the 12th over. Then Michael Clark was joined in by George Bailey, and suddenly uh, there was more trouble for Zimbabwe as uh, Sean Williams got through the defenses of George Bailey for 1, and that made the score 39 for 3 in the 13th over. In walked... Um, um, Glenn Maxwell, the big hitter, to join his captain Michael Clark. But uh, Maxwell, after making 13, was a victim of the balling of Malcolm Waller. Waller clean balling him for four, 13 of 17 balls with 1 4 and 1 6. The score for Australia read 57 for 4 in the 17th over. Marsh came in. Marsh uh, offered a very, very little resistance. But the good thing for Australia was that Michael Clark was there. Michael Clark was uh, playing in a very, very sedate manner as he understood uh, that it was, it was something that he, he was the one who had to take the onus with a lot of wickets falling around him. And he also saw, um, um, uh, also saw Mitchell Marsh um, uh, being gone as uh, Trepano. Uh, the pace bowler was brought into the attack uh, by Elton Sugumbra in a very smart manner uh, because he wanted to see to it uh, that the pace ball has actually uh, completed the quota when Australians were under pressure and he came in and had uh, uh, Donald Trepano getting a wicket here as Mitchell Marsh had gone Kodutsaya bowled Trepano for 15 of 37 balls with 1-4 which made the score 97 for 5 Brad had him joined in Michael Clark and then that is the time that was the only partnership uh, that really, really fetched runs for Australia. Otherwise, the Australians were really, really struggling. The ball was turning. The ball was gripping. It was not easy. And Australians, I think Zimbabwe, uh, the, their, their best bet was the spinners. And that's what they precisely did. In fact, Brad Haddon came in and joined in uh, Clark and they put on the best partnership. It, they put on exactly 50 runs uh, for the fifth wicket before Michael Clark, uh, with a niggle, uh, had to... Uh, actually retire out he had to go back um, uh, go, I mean he had to go back in the midst of his innings uh, and then we had Faulkner coming in Brad Haddon then played some uh, very very good strokes but uh, Brad Haddon was the one who took it on uh, after Michael Clark retired and the James Faulkner once again uh, the Australians uh, found it difficult as James Faulkner the all-rounder was claimed by Prosper Utsaya for a duck and Mitchell Stark was into the pavilion, clean bowl by Williams for three. And once again, this Australian innings was really in tatters, I would say, at 150 for seven. And then, the, uh, even though the 50 partnership between uh, Brad Haddon and Michael Clark was unbroken because of uh, Michael Clark uh, retiring, but Ben Cutting came in and Ben Cutting slammed 26 uh, uh, useful runs uh, in the company of Brad Haddon uh, to make uh, 22 uh, of uh, 26 of 22 balls, uh, two fours and one six before being run out. And finally, uh, thanks to, and then Michael Clark came out and Michael Clark uh, remained unbeaten on 68 of 102 balls with two fours. And also, let me tell you, uh, Brad Haddon was the other principal scorer uh, with 49 to his name of 66 balls with two fours and three sixes. And finally, Nathan Lyon was remaining not out on eight and Australia succumbed to their lowest ever total uh, that uh, they could have against Zimbabwe. This was the lowest total against Zimbabwe. The previous total for Australia, the lowest total was 225. But today, Zimbabwe managed to bowl, Austra I mean, uh, keep Australia to the lowest total uh, of uh, 209 for 9 of the 50 overs. Now, as far as the uh, bowling was concerned, Chatara, 8 overs, no made, and none for 56 was uh, pretty costly. Uh, Nimbu, look at the spinners. Uh, the spin is what that uh, I thought Zimbabwe are really, really relying on now. Now, John Nimbu, they have really found a very good bowler in John Nimbu. If you give him a turning track, if you give him a track which is assisting spin, John Nimbu can really, really be uh, someone you have to really contend with. 
10 overs no made him 30 runs and one wicket. Prosper Utsaya, 10 overs no made him 2 for 45. Uh, Trupano also delivered the goods today. 6 overs no made him 34 runs and 2 wickets for him. Sean Williams did his um, a job in a very, very wonderful fashion. 10 overs, 2 maidens, 21 runs and 2 wickets. And Malcolm Waller, 6 overs, no maiden, 1 for 21. Now, 209 for 9, the lowest Australian uh, or total against Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe, well, but, but one thought that, you know, for Zimbabwe, every time has been, the bowling has been pretty good and they've been doing. And, but one never thought that, you know, Zimbabwe would be in a position to win this match. But, well, let me tell you, they had a very quiet start with uh, Tino Mawayo. The, in fact, the um, uh, Zimbabwe is sticking to the... Uh, the same opening partnership, opening combination of Tino Mawoyo and Sukandar Raza. And today they were a bit, uh, very, very sedate. They in fact played out three maiden overs uh, in the initial, um, initially uh, when Mitchell Stark and um, uh, Mitchell Stark and Mitchell Marsh were bowling. Uh, Tino Mawoyo was uh, pretty, pretty watchful. He was pretty sedate. Uh, Sukandar Raza slowly opened up by uh, hitting a few boundaries and when everything was going and, and that was the time when Zimbabwe had actually put up their highest opening partnership in the series of 42 and that was the time the right arm was in fact uh, Michael Clark had already uh, he knew that uh, his best bet was Nathan Lyon Nathan Lyon was introduced into the attack and Nathan Lyon immediately uh, responded uh, by getting the wicket of uh, Tino Moweo where the ball actually curled in it turned from outside the off stump uh, to, uh, to through the bat and pad gap of the opener Tino Mawoyo to go and hit the stumps and Tino Mawoyo is walking to the pavilion clean ball by Nathan Lyon for 15 of 44 deliveries with 1-4 which made the score as I said the best opening partnership for Zimbabwe was put which was uh, pretty important and uh, well the score read 42 at that stage in the 12th over. Uh, Sikandar Raza was still there looking good he was joined in by Hamilton Masakadza but uh, uh, once uh, uh, in fact, once, uh, in fact, the, I, I'm sorry to say that uh, Sikandar Raza was the first wicket to go. He was caught by the substitute Smith of the bowling line for 22 of 32 balls of four fours, and then the next wicket to go was Tino Mawoyo with a beautiful delivery. He was gone for 15, which made the score 44 for two uh, for the Zimbabweans. Uh, Masakadza and Brendan Taylor were the crease, and that was the time when uh, the Michael Clark, the Australian captain, uh, had his two spinners uh, bowling in tandem. Uh, one was Nathan Lyon from the one end and he had Aaron Finch. Aaron Finch, uh, well he came in for some severe tap in a particular over uh, where uh, Masakadza went aerial by slamming him for a six on the boundary. Brendan Taylor got a boundary and it was a costly over from uh, uh, Aaron Finch. And then later on Michael Clark introduced this uh, other uh, off-spin bowler, uh, Glenn Maxwell, into the attack. And both Nathan Lyon and uh, Maxwell were bowling in tandem. And that was the time both uh, Masakadza and Taylor were uh, uh, pretty comfortable. Uh, and what they did is uh, they, they really took this partnership uh, and uh, added 56 uh, uh, pretty good runs uh, uh, for the uh, third wicket uh, with Masakaja and Taylor looking good. But uh, when, when the score reached 100, uh, that was the time uh, Mitchell Stark was, uh, came into the attack and Mitchell Stark rattled the stumps of Masakaja. In fact, he turned Masakaja into half in that particular delivery and he had uh, Masakaja's stump shattered for 18 of 35 deliveries, 1-4 and 1-6, the score at 100 for 3 in the 23rd over. Brendan Taylor was joined in by Malcolm Waller at that stage. Brendan Taylor, uh, he was uh, looking pretty good with his stroke making, uh, looking confident. Malcolm Waller joined him, but as soon as Masakadza went, uh, it was the turn for Brendan Taylor uh, to be a victim of Nathan Lyon, as uh, Nathan Lyon uh, went through the bat and pad gap of Brendan Taylor uh, to clean ball him for 32 of 26 deliveries with five fours and suddenly there was a bit of a pressure when Masakaja and Taylor left in quick succession at the score on 102 for four. Uh, after that Sean Williams and Malcolm Waller decreased but uh, today Malcolm Waller and Sean Williams couldn't contribute much and suddenly the pressure started building on the Zimbabweans as um, uh, Malcolm Waller actually uh, took, gave a return catch uh, to uh, Glenn Maxwell and he was a goner uh, for 11 of 39 deliveries 1-4 and then Sean Williams was walking back to the pavilion a beautiful catch uh, it, it's a cut it was a, actually a reverse sweep which was attempted the previous ball went for four but once again a reverse sweep was attempted by Sean Williams and well the ball went in the air and Clark uh, going aerial and taking up the catch uh, with his uh, just stretching himself and taking a very good catch of the battling of Nathan Lyon he was gone for four 
and as I said suddenly the Zimbabwean innings once again uh, started um, really really crumbling under pressure and the score read 142 for 6. This was the time the Elton Shigumbra, the Zimbabwean captain was there at the crease, he was joined in by Donald Trepano and they had a real job to do. But um, uh, Donald Trepano unfortunately was a clean ball by Mitchell Stark for 3 and, and Zimbabwe once again looked like probably going to lose uh, this particular match because the score read 156 for 7 as Prospero Utsaya slowly strided down uh, to join Elton Chugumbra. So uh, 7 for 156 in the 39th over but a lot of overs remaining that was a good thing but the good thing for them was Elton Chugumbra was there. Now Elton Chugumbra, uh, well he had understood his responsibilities and uh, of late one has seen that Elton Chugumbra after getting his captaincy one has seen a different approach in Elton Chugumbra is no longer the person who tries to belt the ball. Uh, those days are gone. He, he actually tries to stay at the crease, uh, plays uh, some percentage strokes and when the time comes where he has to unveil some big strokes, uh, he's a quite a heavy bloke. He can really hit the ball pretty hard and was waiting. And that was the time he joined, was joined in by Prosper Utsai of the score in 156 for 7. But still there was a long way to go for Zimbabwe. They required another 55 runs to win the match. And the pressure was building and it was not so easy. Mitchell Stark was brought back. Nathan Lyon was bowling well and it was pretty, pretty tough. But Elton Chugumbra um, stuck it out there playing a very, very cool and calculated nod. He was probably determined today that he is not going to leave, leave this opportunity go by begging. Prosper Utsaya joined him and Prosper Utsaya uh, played in a very, very positive manner. Uh, he hit one beautiful boundary uh, over the infield. Uh, and then when th things were suddenly, um, uh, I mean slowly both of them uh, really played a lot of dot balls. They really uh, bided their time at the crease because 38.2 uh, overs, uh, it took a long, but what they did is they bided their time at the crease, played out the overs and finally the things were slowly, slowly they gathered pace and brought the score to uh, the 200 mark and that was the time Zimbabwe definitely would have had the belief that they are going to win this match. And then Elton Chugumbra played some very good strokes and finally Elton Chugumbra reached a 50. Uh, he was not on 52 of 68 balls with four fours when the victory came. And Prosper Utsaya, what a shot he played to get the winning hit for Zimbabwe as he smoked Mitchell Stark over the mid-wicket region for a boundary. And the crowd was in absolute frenzy. The all Zimbabwean players rushed in. Uh, to congratulate Prosper Utsai and Chigumbra and what a partnership for the 8th wicket for Zimbabwe a winning 55 run partnership uh, for the 8th for the, um, wicket a winning partnership at that with the, the Zimbabwean captain Elton Chigumbra playing a cool and a calculated knock of an unbeaten 52 of 68 deliveries with 4 fours. Uh, really, really nursing his uh, team home, but Prosper Utsaya, let us also thank Prosper Utsaya uh, for a very, very useful knock of an unbeaten 30 of 28 balls with two fours and one six. And the biggest upset in the year 2014 was today uh, done by Zimbabwe to Australia when Zimbabwe beat Australia in this particular match and also kept their hopes alive in the tri series here in Zimbabwe. And let's look at the bowling figures for the Australian bowlers. Uh, Nathan Lyon uh, was actually picked up some very good bowling figures. 10 overs on made 44 runs and 4 wickets. Aaron Finch 2 overs for 19. Uh, Glenn Maxwell bowled 8 overs no maiden. 1 for 41. 1 over for 2 runs for Michael Clark who wheeled his arm over for one time. And I'm also, I, I, and I also have some news coming in right now that Michael Clark is out of the tie series with an injury which is very pretty sad news. Um, as far as uh, the Australian uh, pace bowlers are concerned, Mitchell Stark, 10 overs, 3 made and 41 runs and 2 wickets bowled, stuck, stuck to it well. Mitchell Marsh, 4 overs, 1 made and none for 13. Was a bit surprised that Mitchell Marsh was not uh, brought back. Uh, ben Ketting uh, also bowled uh, very effectively, 6 overs, none for 18. Faulkner, 7 overs, no made and none for 28. But everything to no avail as Zimbabwe this time didn't go the opportunity of begging. After a gap of 31 years, they beat Australia. Uh, since they beat them uh, in the 1983 World Cup where they upset the apple cart of Australia in the World Cup 1983 but here they were but what was as I said what was pretty good and pretty good and where, where you know the Zimbabwean did a lap of honor and why not 
because for them uh, the, the main thing was that Zimbabwe uh, had upset Australia in England in the World Cup 1983 and this was the first time they gave the Zimbabwean home, f home fans tremendous joy as uh, this was the first time they upset an international cricket team on their own turf, on their home turf and what a feeling that would be and I'm sure the party for Zimbabwe is going to continue through the whole night and congratulations Zimbabwe for creating the, the biggest upset in the year 2014 but let me also tell you uh, in my, the every time I have been telling you that uh, the Zimbabwean bowling has been looking pretty sharp uh, their batting today definitely came to the fore no doubt about it but I still think they need to improve a lot as far as the batting is concerned which will really make them a good unit but another thing that they really, really need to concentrate on is their fielding because I think they dropped five catches and Australia would have not even got to 209 probably they would have been bowled out for 200 according to me because there were five catches which were fluffed by the Zimbabwean fielders and that is not something that you can do in international cricket I think this, the coach uh, Stephen Mangango is a very very disciplined person and I'm sure he's going to goad his boys and he's going to see to it that in the matches to come if Zimbabwe have to go on and reach the final of the Tri-Series if at all uh, they are going to create an upset they need to really really perk up that feeling they have some two good spinners in Prosper Sire and John Nimbu and uh, to me, uh, any, if, if, if at all Zimbabweans are now going to bank on real spin, they have uh, not, they, they don't have a very, I mean, one has to really give credit to Zimbabwe because they lost to Nasha Panyangra was expelled from the Tri-Series due to indiscipline. Now, if he would have been there, one does not know. But what I, what I want to say is the Zimbabwean unit uh, looked pretty strong and today the batting really helped. But the, I thought the bowling was good. Uh, the bowling was superb in fact, the batting was uh, uh, pretty good, they, as I said I, they could do better but the fielding is the one that they need to really really concentrate on if they are going to make a real fist of this tri-series here in Zimbabwe. Well once again your host Ram would like to congratulate Zimbabwe, the cricket team and all the Zimbabwe home fans, Zimbabwe fans uh, for uh, getting this, uh, creating the biggest upset of the year 2014 with this particular uh, information your host Ram is going to end the cricket show this on a Sunday on Cricket Happenings and see you all tomorrow until then it's goodbye from your host Ram Studios thank you